Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Line Change, the NHL betting podcast from the Action Network. My name is Michael Leboff, and joining me for this hour, Eastern Conference playoff preview. We'll look at all four um, Eastern Conference series, the, the series prices. We'll go over some game one stuff. Uh, we'll talk about our favorite Conn Smythe futures from the East, uh, our Nick Martin and Tim Kalinowski. We are recording this on Wednesday. Uh, we wanted to get this out as early as possible, give people an opportunity to to, to listen and, and and help you make some uh, informed decisions on going into the playoffs. And with the playoffs starting on Saturday now, moved up from Monday um, and the way that the podcasting industry works and nobody really listens over the weekend, we wanted to uh, try to get this as much shelf life as possible. That's why we're recording here. But we do have odds for each series. We have Con Smythe odds. Um, and we have a pretty good idea of where uh, the game one market will will open if it hasn't already. So I feel like we're in pretty good shape to get this going. Uh, Tim and Nick will start with the Panthers and Lightning uh, in true NHL fashion. We still don't have a confirmed schedule, but the all the signs are pointing to Panthers and Bolts starting the playoffs off at 5 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. If it's not them, it'll be the Islanders and Hurricanes in the spot. But I digress. Uh, Florida is a minus 170 favorite in the series. Bolts plus 145. The Tam- uh, the, the Panthers uh, come into this one red hot. They storm past the Bruins to win the Atlantic Division in the last on the last day of their regular seasons. They look like they are back into that formidable fa- uh, form that we saw from them over uh, a large part of the season. Deserving favorites here. I do think that this series line kind of is a it's a little tempting on Tampa, but I think I think this thing has so much chaos written into it that you might be able to just, if you want to bet Tampa, you can wait uh, a, a, a game or two, see how it shakes out. Uh, Cause I could see this thing going in a million different directions, which I don't think is the case for the other three series. So there's a lot of variance and chaos that you can play into here, whether you want to bet like sweeps or uh, however you want to do it, Nick, I think that this one um, can go any direction and I'll, I'd listen to you. Yeah, I see value with the play that I'm I'm going to be locking in and uh, highest on in terms of like what I'd want to stake the most is the Panthers to cover the series handicap at plus 110. So that would mean winning 4-2, 4-1, or 4-0 and just not losing in any fashion or winning in game, game 7, obviously. I just still think the gap between these teams is really significant. I think when Ekblad's healthy, which he's already been confirmed as in the lineup for game 1, uh, Florida has a way better defensive core. They, they like really their small little sample of lesser play this year was when quite a few guys were dinged up and they were really just in the dog days of the year. The rest of the year, they've been the far better team down the stretch. They still came in with uh, what I thought was a really impressive run, both like eye test and underlying results. They're back up to 58% expected goals in the last 10. We know this team can play playoff style hockey. We saw it last year. I think they're way deeper. I think they can make a top nine that has three legitimate units that should provide a lot of scoring. Whereas, Tampa's still going to be really reliant on that top unit and the power play. And obviously that is the, a big wild card when you talk about the power play for for the Lightning and uh, what Andre Vasilevsky can do. But still, for what's now been almost three years, vassy has been less commonly himself, less commonly stealing games. He had a really hard time versus uh, Toronto last year in a series. I think a lot of people were sure the Lightning had to win. So I still think the gap between these teams is wide enough that I actually see value if you're getting plus 110 for Florida to win in six or better. I, I'm I'm pretty high on that. And then the other thing is for as amazing as Kucherov has been, that top line still can get exposed at even strength. And I still think Barkov can, can that line is going to lose the head to head or lose most of the head to head minutes versus Barkov's unit with Reinhardt. They're such a good defensive unit. So I really think that at even strength, there's a lot of edges for the Panthers. And if they can avoid just getting crushed in terms of the special teams, I think the series is theirs for the taking. So um, I think we're getting a pretty good number because of what the Bolts have done historically and their little push at the end of the year here. But I still think that right now the Panthers are a far superior team. Yeah, I mean, look, I I have a a future, a cup future on Florida. I think maybe we all do. We we pump their tires a lot uh, during the season, but I'm going the other way um, in terms of the series price with Tampa here at plus 145. And to me, Nick, it's because I see the avenue with the special teams. And uh, I know what um, I think so often these 
series come down to who's clicking on the power play. And so I'm just going to take the best power play. And um, I guess it's a bit of a hedge for my, my Florida cup future, but also too, when you, when you think about the style that, that Florida wants to play right there, I would, I would honestly feel pretty good um, about the lightning in terms of being able to match that kind of just, you know, Friedman always just calls it. They're just a bunch of pricks. Right. And I think that Tampa, um, it is totally fine matching that intensity. And then even if Florida, you know, they can bait Florida into some extra dumb penalties and be able to capitalize on it. This so much of these series come down to, well, well, we were cold in game six and seven on the power play. And um, to me, that's just enough. And especially with the future already. Yeah. And I'm, even the special teams though, like if you add up the special teams of both sides, Tampa comes in like 6% higher. So it's not like that. And like you're saying, that could go either way. And then when I think about the way this could go at even strength, Bobrovsky's a, a bit of a question mark. It's crazy how many goalies you can say that over. But yeah, well, I'm I'm pretty high on the Panthers. I think they're going to, I think they get this thing done and uh, expose some of the Lightning's flaws. Yeah, and looking at some, some of the prop angles here, Nick, you had jot down Matt Kachuk to lead the uh, series and scoring. I don't think that's bad. I also think that... Uh, the Panthers con Smythe conversation is really interesting. Uh, we'll we'll touch on our favorite con Smythe bets at the very end, but uh, there's a number of different ways you you want to go here. Um, and I think that you're kind of being able to make a decision between um, Barkov, Kachuk, or Sam Reinhardt, just keeping his his uh, scoring streak going. I think that the Kachuk to lead the series in uh, in goals is a good look at, at anything around ten to one. Uh, but anything else on props you want to mention? Uh, no, I think that's it. And I didn't have any game score stuff on this one either. Perfect. Um, all right. So that's uh, Bolts and, and Panthers. Uh, I think that, like I said, that that thing has chaos written all over. It should be a lot of fun. The next one in a has a chaos in a different way. I don't think that the the on-ice product will be chaos, but the, uh, the off-the-ice antics should be absolutely out of this world, especially because it's going to start on Hockey Night in Canada Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Toronto traveling to Boston. The Bruins are a nominal favorite. They're minus 125 to win the series. Leafs plus 105. Tells you what uh, the market thinks about these teams here. Uh, one, I, I would lean towards the Bruins here, and it's it's purely coming down to the goaltending because I do think that when you you size up the tail of the tape, you can say, all right, the, the Bruins, that uh, the Leafs, that top end scoring is there with Matthews. Marner and Nylander. We won't get into like the narratives and stuff, but you know that that those guys should provide a, a significant edge in that department. Then you flip it to the other side of the ice, and the Bruins have the elite blue line, and they got the great goaltending tandem. And I just really w- wonder about this Samsonov uh, Wool situation for Toronto, where it's like Boston can can roll out, they can keep rotating, they can do whatever um, game planning, game management they need to with their goaltenders, and you'd feel pretty good the opposite is true with the Leafs I think that is a difference maker in a playoff series obviously it sounds obvious to say so I actually don't mind laying minus 125 with Boston I wouldn't go much further um my favorite bet though here is I like Brad Marchand to lead this series in scoring if it's it's gonna be really hard to beat Austin Matthews obviously but you're getting 17 to 1 on on Marchand you'd expect him to find some sort of form here he's he's great playoff performer uh, the power play should hopefully tick up better. Uh, and I, I'm I'm hopeful that with the attention being paid to uh, David Pasternak, maybe there's some some avenues to success for this one uh, for Marsh. And anything here for you, Nick? Yeah, I had a couple plays I like here. I think this one's going to be really close. In terms of the series price, I actually thought it was fair. And just because I, I think you made the right argument with the goaltending. But the other thing is that the Leafs were pretty much better in every single category for the last two months. So... Um, and, and I get, maybe you want to give a little credit to the way these series have gone. That's fair too, but we're talking about a team that's minus 125 here that I think still has some question marks. I think the Leafs should be able to control more of the play. They have been better for what's been a pretty long period of time. They have a lot more high end talent pulling in the right direction compared to Boston. Uh, the Bruins have a better decor, better goaltending, but I still don't necessarily think it's a great number given that the Leafs should probably own slightly more of the play. But I do think it's going to be a really closely contested series. I think as long as the Leafs get fairly steady goaltending, it should be pretty back and forth. And I don't think they're going to have to ask that much of their net miners. And 
you can bet the series to be tied 2-2 after four at plus 150. I think there's value in that. I think it's going to be a really common score line for it to just be split, split between the home and homes. And I also like game seven at plus 190. I think that those are both really logical. I think this thing's going to be really contested. I honestly lean with the Leafs, not enough to bet, but I kind of just feel like they have enough edges and more of the top dogs going. We'll see. And the one thing that I'll throw out there too, I saw a lot of people last year and you know, and I'm not entirely going to flex because I was also on Toronto to win the cup, which ended up being idiotic. But I did pick them to beat Tampa last year and people were not stoked on that. And I saw a million people saying it was a lock that the Lightning would win that series just because they hadn't lost to Toronto before. But that's always how these things go until they change. Um, if it was as easy as just following those like can't lose trends, everyone would just be crushing the, the sports books. And, you know, it's the same kind of thing I saw with the caps and the pens. So I do think that you probably don't want to just think like they can't do it because they've historically gotten owned by the Bruins. It's not, you know, it doesn't mean this series is over before it starts. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts there. But I, I do think it's going to be really closely contested. So I like that 2-2 tie after four and the game seven prop as well. Yeah, and, you know, as a as a Bruins fan, I think that I, I kind of wanted to lean towards the Leafs just because of, you know, the narrative in Boston is like, you know, they want we wanted the Leafs so bad, right? Like, give us the Leafs, give us the Leafs, we own them. And I think what people kind of leave out um, sometimes in that is like, a lot of these series have been really close. You know, everyone talks about the, the Bergeron one and that comeback. It's like, that was game seven with the Leafs, like, you know, minutes away from winning. Right. So I think that that kind of gets lost on a lot of people. And, and that's why I kind of wanted to bet into Toronto here, but I just wish the number was a little bit bigger. I think that it's possible Bruins win game one. And I could see myself taking the Leafs um, to win the series after, after game one, but uh, I'm going to bet here. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to eat it here. The over under for games in the series, five and a half. Uh, I'm just taking the over um, it's minus 188. And I, I just think that there's no way this thing is less than five games. As I mentioned before, we like to have this idea in Boston that it's, they just blow out the Leafs there and it's not close, but I think this has, like you said, Nick, I think it says six, seven written all over it. Yeah. That, I mean, the, the 2013 series, like who's even left is Marsha and the only player that was probably in that game. I'm guessing yeah. not that it matters, but yeah, I, I think that's always the thing. It's always a, closer like a break here or there and i think that showed last year because i think the leafs didn't necessarily like it's not like they dominated the lightning they just got some timely bounces and goals and i kind of like i should have thrown out there i'm interested to see i'm predicting the leafs will be plus 105 in game one and at that point i'd have a small play i'll put this out there now we'll probably talk about it a lot and we've talked about how it dates back a lot more than last season but last year in the nhl playoffs road teams went 42 and 36 so in general, if you're going to have home ice advantage factored in pretty heavily into the odds, which typically they are, I would try to lean towards keeping in mind that it hasn't actually played out uh, where where home ice advantage has been much of a factor at all. Um, like I said last year, they were 42 and 36. I didn't dive into the profitability of that, but I would assume uh, road teams were pretty highly profitable. And I know in round one specifically, actually, they did really good last year. So I'm not saying that needs to be replicated, but... Um, don't overrate home ice just as a rule because uh, for what's been a pretty large sample of years, it hasn't been something that matters too much. All right, let's move on to the Metro bracket. Then it's the Hurricanes and Islanders up first. Carolina is a, a chunky favorite here. They're minus 340. Leafs, excuse me, the Islanders are sitting at plus 280. I do think that uh, there's, an, there's a chance that Folks are underestimating the Islanders a little bit uh, with the way that they've played down the stretch. Uh, that much better defensively under Patrick Wah. They're playing just like the tighter game, and you've heard me all season if you've been listening talk about the uh, the mistakes that just would crush this team at the worst possible time. Those have been cleaned up a bit. Noah Dobson's health is a massive, massive part of this entire equation. He did skate. Uh, today, before the Islanders played the the Penguins, it does look like he's on track to play game one, but we'll see. Um, if Dobson's healthy, I think I'll likely just be betting the Islanders at, if you can get plus 180 or better uh, in game one. I think that this team is, is heading in the right direction. 
Um, but they are running into what I think is the best team in this conference. So I don't know how much value is there. There are some some fun prop angles here as well. If you are uh, looking to bet some Islander-based props, I actually think if you can find Kyle Palmieri to lead the Islanders in scoring, he's certainly worth a shot with the way that... I, like the, the Hurricanes are so good at line matching on that top line with Horvath and Barzell. I think we saw this last year with the series, right? The Angval, Palmieri, Nelson line uh, last year against the Hurricanes was the Islanders' best line because Horvath and Barzell, and Barzell was a little banged up, so take it for what you will, was just shut down by uh, the, the Hurricanes' defensive uh, fortitude. So I, I don't think Palmieri's a bad shot at, at a decent number. And there is, you'll love this, at BetMGM you can bet series leader in hits. And there are two Islanders at the top of the list. And that is uh, Cal Clutterbuck at plus 750. And Matt Martin is right behind him. If the Islanders play more than three, or if they play more than two games at UBS Arena, (laughs) the way that their scorekeeping is, like there's, I don't know if there's a way that these guys lose this, this, this market. And I would, I, I like, I can't believe I'd be endorsing betting the favorite in this kind of market. But if they play, even if they just play two games at UBS Arena, they're going to be credited with so much. It's not a like a plus expected value, but I'm just so amused that this market now is out there, um, and with the way that these two guys have been treated by the scorekeeper scorekeepers at on the island for years and years, it's been a running joke in the NHL. Like Cal Clutterbuck became the first NHL player to hit four thousand to, to record four thousand hits, uh, and he owes a lot of those to the uh, the generous scorekeeping. So. I, that's something just to keep in mind if you're looking to have some fun. Uh, anyways, Nick. Even, uh, even when it's in Carolina, Leboff, they'll be chasing a lot of the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I don't... They, they won't have the puck. Like, they're not going to have the puck yeah, at all. They're not like, going to have the just... puck. Um, yeah, no, I I agree. How long has that scorekeeper been there? And he's doing a terrible job on shorts, shots this year. <laughs> he's spending too much time racking up those hits. Yeah. It's hilarious that these markets are out there now because the hit is so debatable like yes. no one knows what is scored as a hit in the nhl which yeah anyways i i kind of with you mike like i like i think ultimately my prediction on the series is that this looks really similar to last year where the islanders give them a good honest scare and hang around and i i almost think the way the islanders like to play works reasonably well with carolina because it's just like hang in there don't let them open it up um but i do think that the Canes find a way now I, I wouldn't prefer to tar- like, I don't think it's worth paying the series price at all. It just feels like there's enough question marks and, and always in the NHL, I'm never overly interested in laying like huge numbers. It just feels like round one's so volatile always. And, and this, like, I do think that Carolina has some pretty notable edges and don't hate them to, you know, don't hate picking your favorite con Smythe player off there, which we debated off air for a while. And, don't hate them still to win the cup, even though as a favorite, probably not a lot of value there. But I really didn't have a lot in the series. The only one that I did have was with like a pretty chalky angle. I thought that Gensel to score the most goals at plus 600 was worth a bet. That line has just been so, so good. I think the power play is could be an area where they need to find some success. And they've looked a lot better there since Gensel's came into came onto the roster. So I want to I want to target that line. And we know Gensel can can find ways to score in the playoffs. He's so good at finding little pockets of space um, and playing in these tighter games. So I I think Gensel's a solid bet. I think that's in with a bit of a better sh- chance than 6-1 uh, than to one suggests. So that's, I think, my lone play from this series. Tell me, tell me if this makes sense. I, I see myself betting the Islanders more like game by game than I, I do series. Um, no, I think it does. Yeah, and- I agree. And, um, I, yeah, I, I certainly like Leboff, I, we've talked a lot this year about, especially under Lambert, that it was not the Islanders of old. Um, they were, you know, like a dead over team for a while. And, um, so I would, I guess I would defer to you is this, this is more classic Islanders. Cause I feel like a lot of people yeah. will look, look at this and be like, you know, is this the same, same thing over and over? Like we doing the same dance again. This, this is a, a, a joke or a, tongue-in-cheek comment for like a very specific audience but when the islanders are playing the rangers on saturday at the garden um i i texted somebody that they looked like the 2021 islanders again which was the team that went to the conference final and i had two separate people then text me that same exact sentiment Mm -hmm. um and i do 
think that like th there's a really reasonable argument here to suggest that the Islanders have more talent on paper this year and they've had improvements from players um, who've taken a step forward this year to make their roster better than what the Canes faced last year, which once again, Matt Barzell was really, he, he hadn't played the last two months of the season going into that series and then was still banged up. But the other side of the coin is that the Canes are also better. So it's, it's, it's very interesting in that regard. Like the Islanders had, it looked like the Islanders had caught up on last year's Canes, but then the Canes had obviously gotten better. They fetched the cost back and get Gensel's in the fold now and all that. Um, and then also like the goaltending edge for the Islanders is still there. Like Freddie's been great. Uh, and, and Kochekov has, has been good when called upon as well. So it's maybe not as pronounced as we thought it was going to be last year. Like last last season, a lot of people were stumping for betting on the Islanders and they're like Sorokin can play up to whatever the, you know, Ranta and Anderson, et cetera. Um, but this year, I think the Islanders goaltending is still really good, but the Canes has caught up a little bit. So as Nick said, and, and you said, Tim, like I think that the way to go into this is is kind of expect the Canes to win a series that jolts them a bit. And I think if you bet into that, um, that probably means you're betting Islanders game by game and um, losing, you know, 4-2 or 4-3. In the end, we'll see. Um, yeah, one more thing. Um, I, I'm interested in in overs um, in this series as well, um, game by game. I expect five and a halfs. And I, I, I just feel like there's um, I that same kind five. of... I think we're yeah, gonna yeah we'll five. see fives. I, I think, think we're gonna get if five it goes away series, last yeah. year, did yeah. So I, yeah, what? But my point is, I just feel like a lot of the narrative is the same thing. This is you know uh, one nothing series, uh, game by game, written all over it. But I I like um, Carolina's improvements, especially with Gensel, and then I like the Islanders. You know, if we look improvements of like what they've gotten from Dobson, you know what Horvat and Barzell is able to give them. Wall plays them more minutes. I I just feel like it could get the market could get so low on some of these that and my natural instinct is is to maybe grab some some overs here especially with you know the goaltending you know you call them goaltending concerns in carolina it's more just like you know again add them to the list of instability shall we say yeah and i, I do think with stuff like that there is a lot of time to see before you have to like lock yourself into an opinion or like bets because i like i think you look at something like that caps flyers game last night and it's mm -hmm. a little different because what the caps are but you could see six minutes into the game, like, okay, if there's more than four goals here, it's going to be pretty shocking. So it'll be interesting to see, I think, if game one looks like that. I can see where you're coming from, because down the stretch, Carolina was turning towards being way more of a high event team. They were actually giving up a little more than usual, too. But who knows how that changes once the puck drops on game one. And then, yeah, the other, like, I think the interesting thing with Carolina is to see how Anderson goes, because he was so good this year. Yeah, he was ridiculous. He finished with a plus 12.2 goal save above expected, which... Per game, I would assume, puts it in, in like the league's top 20. Uh, so he really was good. But it just feels like one of these things that you don't know if you can count on him to be that good or not. And and we'd be remiss to not to say that the Hurricanes power play has been awesome this year. And the Islanders are the 32nd ranked penalty kill, too. But the upside there is that they they don't really take many penalties. So um, anyways, that's, that's Islanders and Canes, I think, uh, a series that looks a little bit closer than the odds suggest, but not anything too exciting to to bet on in, in uh on the series line. The widest odds in the Eastern Conference are belong to the Rangers at minus four fifty against Nick's Caps. Congratulations to Nick and congratulations to the Capitals fans. Uh they are plus three forty. Congratulations to me because I kept saying that this team was gonna find its way in. They just played a style that meant that they were never going to fall out of the race. And I give them so much credit for it. It was so much fun to watch that game last night. And I would never text this to you because that's just horrible, you know, juju or, or karma. But I was like, there's no way that the Flyers are getting to two here. The Capitals were unbelievable last night watching Dylan Strom jump in front of pucks, Dylan McElrath, Ovi. It was so much fun. That is my kind of hockey right there. It was beautiful. Um, and I also think you, like you guys Tim, suck. Tim, you're, I you're, think you're, they're so lovable, Tim. I think are, this crazy. is a great group. This is a, th there's no, I don't understand how any neutral fan can't be just absolutely charging. And all those team. wild card teams suck. Like, yeah, yeah the, like Peng they... the Penguins were, were would have been better. But Detroit, like down the stretch, and I know, Tim, this is why you think it would have been more fun to have the Wings. But the Wings couldn't defend, yeah. and the Caps couldn't score. And they both, you know, at the and, end and of the day. And in this specific matchup, knowing right. that they were going to play the Rangers, like who would you rather play that play the Rangers? I would much rather take the team that's going to just 
sit in the middle of the slot and and lay down than uh, the team that's going to say, all right, we'll 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 play the Rangers in a back and forth power play fest. Like, come on, uh, this I I think that this line is actually getting a little wide. Um, I'm going to be betting the Capitals a lot here. I think that when you consider what they can do well and and how Lindgren is playing and and whether he can continue that remains to be seen, but people are talking about the pressure of the playoffs getting to him. He's been playing must win games for a week now. Um, and he was just dynamite in that back to back. So I, I think the capitals actually have a little bit of a value here and I'm probably going to be betting them, uh, on the series line and game one. I, I, I think that this Rangers team, if you can keep them frustrate them at five on five, like you have a shot and, and, uh, if you keep you stay out of the box, and we'll see. I think that this is uh, – I think there's many more wrinkles to this series than people are going to talk about here. I think so many people are just going to give the Caps credit for getting in and then leave it at that, where I actually think this this goes way way deeper. Uh, Nick, I think, uh, I think we could see something here. I sure hope you're right, and it's, it's crazy for all the Caps years where they came into the playoffs, and I felt like I was – you know, I just knew I was going to be depressed if they lost this year is like if they win a game, if they make it a series, if they do anything, it's going to be awesome. I honestly, I think I didn't have much betting value at this point. I'm invested enough that I'm not like overly thrilled to give out betting takes on the games. Uh, I, I think prop wise, it's always fun to follow your team and figure out what you like, but it gets harder to give like a, like opinions where you're not kind of tapped into it a little bit as you actually care i know all year and i don't even think i did overly good on caps games but for so long it was so hard to like even be invested enough to you know have bias but um i think the one factor that is going to be a little underrated and you guys know i was picking on this last night but i do think he's just having a really hard time and and more so just about the guys that are going to get in but i think it sounds like rasmus sandin's going to get in i think they'll need him and and it, I don't know what the word is on Nick Jensen. That could be a thing where maybe he's not even close to playing. There was a video of him swinging a golf club the night he got injured. So no one really knows what's up with him. But I think they do need those guys probably to have much chance at all. Like even at just hanging around at five on five and not just getting completely crushed. And the other thing is, I think the Rangers, I think, are a touch better than you guys do. Uh, or I, I guess I shouldn't speak for Tim. I know that they're not great at five on five, but I still feel like this year in some of the big moments, they've played pretty reasonable defensive games. I like their decor and they just, they're so good at creating these chances that lead to actual goals. And it'll be interesting to see how those hold up in the playoffs. But I think that's one thing. And it, yeah. that's an edge in this series. I think too, when we're talking about, you got to find a way to get goals past lingering is uh, getting some good East to West movement. So I don't know. I, so I, I it's going to be a real, a, an uphill challenge for sure. The Rangers give the Caps more of a path to hanging around at even strength than probably any other team, but the Caps are also just so bad at creating offense that, like, you know, you give up a power play goal or two, and, and they're still, like, I don't think they're going to expose the Rangers' defensive yeah. uh, yeah. play very much. So we'll see. It'll, I I, I want to think it can be interesting, but part of me also thinks if you can, like, control the result at all here, if you're the Rangers, you should find a way, but um we'll see before you go tim there's a couple of things i always like to mention about um the just the difference between handicapping stanley cup playoffs and regular season like the rangers are going to be playing the washington capitals over and over and over again and i think that it's obvious that sounds it gets overrated um excuse me it gets overlooked when people are handicapping the playoffs and what what i mean by that is like the the capitals play a very specific trudgy game because it's the only way that they can play they're, they're going to try to limit space. They're not going to care if the Rangers have the puck. And that's not great news for the Rangers because they want the puck moving around. They want to be able to capitalize on mistakes that you make in transition or breaking out and and, and beat you on the rush and make, you know, those those cross-ice passes when they are, um, you know, charging up the ice uh, after you turn a puck over. And I just don't think the Capitals are going to have the puck enough going the other way to, to allow the Rangers do, to do that. And I think that's such a clinical part of their game. So I, I I think there are some stylistic things here that give the Rangers just more. I don't think that the Capitals are going to win. I just think it's going to be much more of a headache than than the odds imply, Tim. Well, um, I don't know why I joined this podcast. You guys, uh, God, this this damn Capitals team. I mean, it, it, they I don't know how you can't love them. I don't know how you cannot love this team. Like, 
because I I want they're an armadillo. I, they just roll up and let things deflect because, off their skull, skull or whatever they have. Because you know what's missing from the New Jersey game that, that you guys are all missing about this defensive masterclass from Washington and you know Philly had no room and all this is that this is why you pay for goal scores. You, Philly could have used Artemi Panarin. You know, David Pasternak. They needed. They did it to Pasternak the night before. Morgan Frost. Oh, the Bruins didn't. The Bruins didn't show up. The Bruins rolled over because they wanted the Leafs, um, and they might pay for it. But they, they were they're It's hard to. It's going to be hard for you know if it goes seven games, whatever, multiple games to keep guys like Panarin off the score sheet, and that 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 to me is what makes the the Capitals thing so tough. And yeah, you know, as a state championship winning coach who knows how to put the clamps down. Uh, I, I do appreciate it, but I just don't like watching it. It's like, we all want what we don't have. Like I, the, the, the teams like Detroit that just had no regard for a defense playing Montreal the last two games. That was like the sexy girl you can't have. That to me was uh, the entertainment. And really what I'm, what I'm saying is I just, I think that that style that Washington plays it, it is, it's so difficult to, it's the margin is so thin, right? And and you're just, they can play totally flawless. And then you get an easy one from Panera and an easy one from Kreider in front. And that is just, it's just debilitating. It's it's really hard to do. And why I'm looking at that MGM right now, and I'm going to take the Rangers minus one and a half, minus 160 on the series spread. Um, I, I think, Nick, it was an incredible accomplishment by your group. I don't know how they have the gas to go multiple games with with the Rangers. Yeah, no, I'm actually, I, I'm not going to argue that at all. I honestly think, I almost feel like if you like it, the the minus two and a half was plus one fifteen was the best number out there, right? I almost I see one forty five right now. Okay, well I wouldn't. Yeah, if you're sorry, so you if yeah if you have minus one sixty for one and a half, I would definitely play that over two and a half minus one forty, um, yeah. because I just yeah, um. Uh, who knows? I, I want to think the Caps are live, but I'm with you. And it is going to be so much zone time to try to prevent allowing some sort of a play that just re- eventually results in a goal. Though It does suck to be the team that has absolutely, like you have to win though, I think in the playoffs. That's the one thing that I hope gets working the Caps' favor. Yeah. If they do win, it'll probably look like something when they lost in 2009 to Montreal. So, Halak, yeah. Yeah, but this I mean, is, the other uh... day is like that upset happening was probably like, as unlikely as the Og suggested, if you know what I mean. So yeah. um if, not, if the if the game knows? goes past two goals total scored in the game, <laughs> like they're screwed. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it it'll be it'll be an absolute monstrous task, but I think that this is a little trickier than than you'd think. Um so yeah, hats off to the to the caps, man. It's uh it's gonna be hilarious to watch this team go uh against the rangers they couldn't be more different and it's i i just makes me so happy to see a team like this get into the playoffs um you just hate this. the rangers this has nothing to do no with- oh my god you hate the rangers i Mike. do absolutely that, that hate is, the rangers I'm is, an we know you weren't picking the rangers <laughs> i mean you think i was gonna lay by this 450 if it's no no, no i agree, I'd be, uh, I, agree yeah. but... I mean if the rangers I think... were the team that did this i'd be bat- being like you gotta bet the rangers um i do hate the rangers but uh the other thing i want to say is like if this is what the Islanders did in 2019 with Trot. So I love seeing this stuff. I just love seeing teams just absolutely get he squeeze every ounce of a roster to get in. So uh, yeah, they, that team was still better too. Not to get away from the point again. Not, not pre no, but pre preseason. I think the projections probably were worse on that Islanders team than than that, that this Capitals team. The Islanders were like 28th. Um, okay, so. That is all for first round series. Let's go uh, quickly around the horn on some cons. My futures, Nick, uh, you can go first. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just remind everyone quick that this is our East Eastern Conference con Smythe uh, picks today, so we won't have the West ones in here. So just keep that in mind. Um, I like Alexander Barkov. I don't hate Matt Kachuk either. Um, you know, we talked about how I like Kachuk to lead the Lightning series in, in goals at at uh, ten to one. But I like Barkov. I think he's had a really unreal year. I think I picked him to win the Conn Smythe last year and was prepared to look like an idiot when if uh, Kachuk hadn't got hurt and, and they had found a way. But I still want to stick with him. I really like that, that line. 
I think he can be a really good combination of productive while being good enough defensively that people actually notice it. So, and then the other thing is that I still like, uh, think the Panthers have a pretty respectable chance of winning the cup. And I, as noted, I like their matchup versus the lightning. So for all those reasons, I like Barkov to win the comps. I think he's gonna be really live. Don't mind, uh, uh, Kachuk. I know Reinhardt's going to get out there a lot. I'm not going to, talk anyone off that i was kind of i thought he would cool down around february he hasn't he's a really good defensive player too i just think starting fresh with people watching just the playoffs it's more likely that it'll end up being barkov that people notice from that line as the top player but maybe i'll be wrong maybe ryan hurt will kind of do what march so did and come up with all the timely goals um so i like that and then the other one that i like especially as someone who i feel like i could see the miracle run happening or i shouldn't say miracle but this team just actually being good is Adam Fox 95 to 1 on FanDuel? Hopefully, that number hangs around. It's an outlier compared to the other sports books that have put these out, but I think that's too long. I'm seeing this more like Bet 365 that has him at 22 to 1. I'm not really seeing why he's so, so much wider than Panarin and Shesterkin. I know that, uh, you know, Panarin obviously would have been their MVP over the season and I think deserves to be the favorite over Fox out of that team. But I don't think by that much. Fox really moves the needle in every area. He's really critical to them. I think he's another one of these guys that as you watch more and more and, and media really pays attention on a game-by-game -game basis in the playoffs that he's going to have a good chance to be the one who's viewed as the winner. So I thought that was a little too long. I think he's basically the best player on the best team that's way down the board. So that's kind of how I landed on him as, as one of the guys that jumped out to me. Yeah, I endorse all those. Uh, I think that's a good way to look at it. I think I'd maybe rather have uh, Kachuk than Barkov. I I know you said it's um, you know, it's black or white, but I uh, I just think he's just gonna be such a pain. I think in the also ass. that's it's that's, close. That's, I mean, and that's one that I think you can almost wait entirely. for too. Like like that's one that I think will try probably be like neck and neck throughout the playoffs if the Panthers go on a run that like we'll be talking about. Oh, there's six different guys on the Panthers. Like who's who's the one who's like being slept on right now. Um, so keep that in mind too, Tim. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I I, I just like the narrative too. Um, I, I know we almost got into a, a fist fight here in our pre-show about narratives, but um, the narrative that of of Kitchak just he had by his standards just like um you know a a little bit he was just like fine in the regular season and I, I'm not I don't can't find the right word but it wasn't up to what he's totally capable of and I think that like the clean slate in the playoffs is just like perfect for this guy. And we'll hear the classic things of there's guys that get you there and guys that get you through. And Kachuk is like, you, you, Panthers aren't going anywhere without this guy. And he's, he is a, a headliner. Uh, for me, I like Charlie McAvoy at a hundred to one. Um, I think that if the Bruins go on a run and are able to get back to the Stanley cup final and win it, there's a pretty decent chance we're talking about, uh, three players, and that's Marchant, Pasternak, and McAvoy. And you notice I didn't mention the goalies because I think that they are going to split so much time that it'll be kind of hard to, um, almost impossible to pick one or the other. I mean, if if you're going to bet a Bruins goalie, you might as well just bet both of them, and and that's it. Um, so I actually think that getting McAvoy at a hundred to one here, uh, as Nick and as Nick has pointed out, like this is a time when your two hundred foot game gets uh, put under the microscope, and it's also worth worth mentioning that. Unlike the Hart Trophy, when uh, it seems to always go to a forward and then you get like a once every decade goalie and then I think Chris Pronger is still the last defenseman to win it. This is different here. Um, if we go since 2015, or let's we can extend further back actually. Uh, 2011, Tim Thomas goalie, Jonathan Quick the next year goalie. Then it was Patrick Kane and Justin Williams, both forwards. Then a defenseman, Dun Dun Duncan Keith. Uh, Back-to-back -back years for Crosby, so another forward, Ovechkin forward, O'Reilly forward, Hedman defenseman, Vasilevsky goalie, McCarr defenseman, then Marcia so last year forward. So it it isn't just a, a uh, an award that goes to um, forwards at all. Um, and then the last one I would say is like if you're going to bet the Maple Leafs to win the Stanley Cup, I think Austin Matthews at twenty-two to one is fine too. So uh, those those would be my for the Eastern Conference. It is weird how this is setting up. I actually. I'm going to have like a laundry list of cons my futures on the West and very few on the East. I think that this is actually pretty, pretty peculiar how this is setting up um, because I'm, you know, you look at the board, I'm like, okay, I can see a path here. I can see a path here for, for these guys in the West. Oh, and I should mention that Barkov at 30 to one is, is 
uh, one that I would definitely be circling. So that's it uh, for the Eastern Conference preview. Uh, for no, I got to give mine. I got to give. Oh, mine. you didn't Don't give cut yours? Tim out. I thought you give. I, gave... No, oh, no, wow. I was right, speaking for Nick. All right, <laughs> let me start that over. All right, five, <laughs> four, three. Uh, okay, Tim, uh, we'll whip it around to you now. Yes, you you almost skipped me. Um, yeah, so yeah, you can't forget about me. I have two real long ones, and again, we might start a, a wrestling match here. Uh, over these, uh, my first one, Brett Burns, hundred eighty to one. Um, I I don't even know if I should lay it out because uh, again, Nick might reach through the computer screen here and and slap me. But um, I I think the avenue. Look, it's hundred eighty to one. Um, the avenue for Brett Burns is Carolina wins the cup, and you're hoping that Brett Burns is is leading this team um, in points or as a de- leads defenseman in points. Uh, at the very least. And then he's logging big time minutes. And also too, he's where he's well noted as one of the longest tenured guys uh, in the NHL and games played without a Stanley cup. He's a recognizable face. We all, we know media votes on this type of stuff. And um, you know, again, Nick, I'll let you say your piece, but that that's my little a piece on uh, Brett Burns. And then also Brandon Montour, 140 to one. Um, no shock here that I'm going with, uh, Carolina and Florida players who I think are what we believe are the two favorites in the East and Montour just such a horse for Florida. If it's not going to be one of their forwards, uh, I think it, it could be Montour. And I mean, it, it, it well noted last year, Stanley cup, how much people were just um, salivating over Brandon Montour's play. And he's going to have plenty of opportunities to get his points as well. Well, I, I actually thought you had said that the Burns was 80 to 1, so I'm more on board than I thought. But my overlying point about what we had... <laughs> so really? we, had we, we had this entire... <laughs> yeah, at some point that never got restated in the whole bickering. Oh. But the overlying point of what I was saying to Tim is just, I think, like, some of the cons my thoughts, and this applies to, like, ours too, is just, I, I think sometimes they look a little more appealing than they are because you're basically multiplying the chances of you know, that team winning the cup and then dividing up the percent of the time that it'll be whatever, like, X player that you think on the team. So, like, you might only think, you know, like, something like a Montour number might sound great. And not to pick on you here, Tim, I love Montour. He was unreal last playoffs. I think he's, like, the funnest guy ever to watch. So, but anyways, just, like, Montour is an example. If you think the the Lightning are going to win seven, like, whatever, Florida, one or Florida. seven times, or Florida... And then you're going to say Montour will be the con smite 12% of the time. Then you can see how the odds get a lot longer really quick. But um, I, I still think there's a lot of fun sprinkles. And I know, Mike, I think that's kind of what you're saying too with like the East thing. I'm I'm with you. There's less. Like I think all these teams are good enough that there's less picks than usual just because I feel like a lot of them have like so many stars where I'm like, could be that guy, could be that guy. So it feels compared to some years where we're like, okay, it's going to be this guy. Mm-hmm. And even last year, I remember I wrote an article on mcdavid to be the con smythe uh and yeah, that how that was just title. a smarter yeah. bet than the oil and it was just going to be wrong if they yeah. had won it would have just been a worthless yeah. ticket so yep. uh, i'm I'm keeping that note in my head yeah yeah so uh yeah i'm happy that that brent burns situation got resolved I, I think that's a good shot at 180 to one as well um so brent burns sasha barkov uh charlie mcavoy adam fox uh brandon montour these are uh, the guys we're looking for in the East. Like I said, I think that the Western Conference Consmite board is is uh, could take a long time to get through. Um, it's it's a lot more compelling there. So that will be the end of our Eastern Conference preview. We'll have the West done before the end of this week, hopefully, and certainly in in more than enough time before they get started on Monday. Um, and then we'll be recording. Um, basically every other day to make sure that we cover all our uh, playoff games coming our way in the next fortnight. We also, you can also find us on Saturday on YouTube for our bet three, six, five power plays video in which we'll give out our, our favorite bets for over the weekend, the four games over the weekend. Uh, So be sure to check that out. Um, Look in the action app as these markets start to get more settled for game one, et cetera. Um, And, you know, of course, read read Action Network to see Nick's stuff and Tim's stuff and my stuff all over the place. Uh, we thank you for listening for the entire season, and, and hopefully we can set you guys up for a pretty successful playoff run here. 